In this video, we are going to continue with logarithms and do some examples on them. We are going to learn how to solve the value of x, how to factorize, and do a practical application. So what you understand about log is that it is the inverse function of an exponential graph. Then this part here is called the base of the log. And that part there in the place of x, whatever you write down there is called the argument. The properties is that the argument must always be a positive value or bigger than zero. But I can write, for example, And to make the argument positive, I need to make x negative values. So this is a valid statement if x is smaller than 0. But whatever is in the bracket or in that place, in this position, must be bigger than 0. The base must always be bigger than 0 as well, and it can never be 1. If it is equal to 1, you'll get an error on your calculator. Another form of log which we find is when the base is 10. So it's log 10 with the argument. And because this is the most natural log, we don't have to write the 10. But it's only when we use base 10. Up until this point, this is how we learned how to get the log. If I have an exponential um, equation, b to the power of x is equal to c, and I want to solve x, what I do is I make that b, which is the base of the exponent, that becomes the base and the log. The exponent becomes the answer. And the c, or whatever value it's equal to, becomes the argument. Now, as there are Exponent rules. For example, when we multiply exponents of the same base, we add them together and so on. They are also log rules, but they are not examinable in grade 12. So we are not going to dive into them. But be aware that as there are exponent rules, there exists log rules. In the next few examples, we are going to learn how to solve x using logs. So here I have log x, and the argument is 32, is equal to 5. Now without calculating, I know that this value needs to be positive. If I get a negative answer, it will have no solution. So let's follow what we have learned up until now. x becomes the base of the exponent. The argument becomes the answer and that 5 becomes the exponent. Now I need to rewrite 32, and I can write it as 2 to the power of 5. If you have bigger numbers on your calculator, you press Shift, Fact, and that'll turn any number into uh, a product of prime numbers. Now that I have the exponents are the same. I can ignore the exponents and therefore x is equal to 2. In the second example, we have 4 times 3 to the power of 2x minus 1 is equal to 80. And we want to solve x. We have done similar questions in previous grades, but they worked out nicely. Now we're going to use one where it doesn't work out very simply. So first, I can get rid of the 4 by dividing both sides by 4, and then that becomes 20 on the right side. I'm left with 3 to the power of 2x minus 1. Now I want to get rid of the base. So the base of the exponent becomes the base in the log. That part which is equal to becomes the argument, and then 2x minus 1 becomes the subject. 
Now look, this satisfies all the properties of logs. The base is positive and the argument is positive. So we know that the value would exist. So I put those values in my calculator. Remember to use this button, which there's a base value and an argument value which you can enter. The other button is simply log block. That we are not going to use. That's for a log with base 10. And our focus would be on this one. So the calculator produces 2.726 and a few more decimal places. And now I can solve x. I move the 1 over by adding it on the right. Then I divide both sides by 2 and I round off my answer to two decimal places. In the previous two examples, we had x as the base. We also had x as the exponent. And in the third example, we have x as the argument. And now we are going to solve x. So in order to write x alone, the 4 becomes the base of the exponent. The subject becomes the exponent. And the argument becomes the subject. So, simply put, this is the base, that is the exponent, then I have x alone. And 4 to the power of 7 is 16,384. We can also use logs in trinomial expressions. Some of you are already comfortable to factorize just the way it is now. But others still need to do substitution, and that is fine. So I take the middle term, uh, 2 to the power of x, and I make that equal to y. Then the first term would become y squared, the middle term is y, and the constant would remain constant. Now I'm going to factorize. Remember when you factorize to test your factorization. So 2y minus 3y produces a negative y, a positive 2 times a negative 3 produces negative 6, so I know the factorization is correct. So, solving both brackets, I have y equal to negative 2, and y is equal to plus 3. And now, replacing y with 2 to the power of x, I have 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 2, and 2 to the power of x is equal to 3. If I rewrite this as a log, the base of the exponent becomes the base in the log, the exponent becomes the answer, and that value becomes the argument. The same on this side, the base becomes the base of the log, the value is inside as the argument, and x becomes the answer. This value will produce no solution, because the argument is a negative value. And remember, the rules are that this must be a positive value. Another way to see it, there's no way I can write negative 2 to the power of something to get a positive value. So already here we could see that there would be no solution. But it's okay to write it as a log and see that that is a negative value and therefore it produces no solution. On the other side, I have x is equal to log for base 2 and argument 3. This value is positive and the argument is positive so I know this log would exist and I put it into the calculator, and x is equal to 1.58. Logs are normally used in practical applications in the real world. And let's just take this as an example. A certain virus infects people at an alarming rate. A researcher finds that the number of infections can be determined by the following equation. n is equal to 60 times 2 to the power of d where n represents the number of people infected and d the number of days. In how many days will 750,000 people be infected? So this is what we do. We have the equation given by the researcher. 
we want to figure out how many days it will take to get to 750,000 people. We can simplify this by dividing both sides by 60. And now I find D by making 2 the base of the log and 12,500 the argument. Putting that into my calculator, I find D is 13.61, which then means 14 days. So it's 13 days and part of the 14th day. So within 14 days, 750,000 people would be infected. Logs are also used in financial questions, and we will deal with those the moment we do finances. Mm -hmm.